Hello everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to episode 9 of the Karo Khan vs Everything speedrun. In this series, I used to play two 10 minute games, but now we are playing one 15 minute plus 10 second rapid game. And whether we have the white or the black pieces, we're going to be playing a Karo Khan esque setup. And I'll be trying to explain my moves as best as I can so that you guys can understand a lot of the ideas of the Karo Khan and some of the middle game plans that follow on from it. And then in the post-game analysis, we'll be delving a bit deeper into some of the ideas, where the computer thinks I went right, where it thinks I went wrong, and how both I and you can improve your chess in the future. That being said, let's get into the game. All right, we are facing Gibu Free from, I want to say that's Armenia. Let's go. And we have E4, C6, so we don't have to play a Slav defense. My opponent went d4 or c4 we probably would have had to play a slav a lot of the same ideas apply but this is a normal caro obviously d5 to follow and my opponent trades this knight can sometimes be a bit misplaced on f3 with a bishop coming to g4 but it does follow main line theory with moves like bishop d3 c3 might be d2 queen comes out to b3 a lot of the time to target pawn on b7 if my bishop develops and no longer guards it so i'm just going to play knight c6 normal developing move sometimes black tries to strike in the center with the move e5 but not always okay bishop to b5 my opponent has ideas of knight e5 going after the pin knight so we could immediately eh, immediately play a6 to try and kick the bishop we can consider the move queen b6 to just put some pressure on white's pieces and maybe try to encourage him to take us, which would be very good. If a6 takes takes, I don't think it's quite as good because my idea is by taking with the b pawn, I want to put my bishop on a6 probably. Also, queen b6 obviously just develops a piece. Now, if queen b6, knight c3, attacking d5 and defending the bishop, then I suppose I can play something like e6 or knight f6 defending the pawn. Queen b6, knight c3, e6, knight e5, bishop d6. I think I like this because my, my point is that the c pawn belongs on either c3 or c4. And if you put a knight on c3, you're kind of blocking the movement of the pawn. The very typical idea that when a pawn is on d4 or d5, if you have a c pawn, you don't typically want to put a knight in front of it because the c pawn should probably be moving one or two squares forward, depending on whether you want to support your center or attack your opponent's center. You'll find that in um, many, many queen's pawn games. And this isn't even a queen's pawn game. It started with e4, and it still applies. I think queen b6 is a good move. Um... I don't think it can be bad. Like, if my opponent takes, I'm just going to take back and we're going to play chess. We're going to play chess. If I put my knight on f6 at some point, I was a little bit concerned about bishop g5, but I can probably just hop into e4 in some scenarios. Okay, so my opponent attacks d5. See, here I don't quite like it as much because after knight f6, bishop g4... So bishop g5, knight e4, my opponent can take on d5, and I can't take the bishop because my queen and king will get forked. So e6 probably is more natural. If I go knight f6, bishop g5, e6, then he can take and damage my structure, which might be okay, but I don't see any need to voluntarily go into that. e6 I know blocks my bishop from developing, but it's just incredibly solid. And yeah, my, my point is that, that I'm going to claim this knight is misplaced. It looks like a very natural move putting the knight on c3. You attack the bishop, you attack the pawn on d5. And, you know, if you take on d5 at any point, I can't take the bishop because I get forked. But hmm. here I think I can just go a6. If a6, any, if a6 and my opponent takes... And I take, I'm probably good. I could go bishop d7. I could go knight f6. If a6, my only 
slight annoyance is that if I t if he takes and queen takes, he has 95 with tempo. If a6 takes and pawn takes, then I'm a little bit concerned about a5, the queen dropping back, and knight to a4 coming into b6. And it's actually kind of difficult to stop that. Although, although if um, a6 bishop takes, Pawn takes a5, queen c7, let's say, knight a4. I do have the move bishop to b4 check, picking up the a pawn. Oh, also, my queen could probably just take because the rook's connection will be cut off. So let's go a6. Let's deal with this bishop. He may, he may well retreat. He may well retreat the bishop. Uh, but then I suppose our position's all right. A5, I didn't see this move, to be honest, but I don't think it's a problem. I can just drop back to C7. I still attack the bishop. If he wants to go for this plan, like I said, I think we can just take A5, because crucially, this bishop hasn't developed yet, so the rook is not protected, so there's no nasty discoveries. Pretty nice position, pretty nice position. I think we've accomplished some of the main ideas of the Karo Khan. We've got our, a lot of our pawns on light squares, controlling key squares in and around the center. Our bishop is a little bit lame because it's stuck behind the sixth pawn. But that's not the end of the world. We could take on a5. We have two attackers, he has one defender. We could take it. Honestly, I don't see a reason not to. We could also play bishop b4, which I think is probably more accurate because we add another attacker to the pawn. He can't defend it, and we're just developing, which can't be a bad thing. I think bishop b4 is probably the best move because I, I, I don't see what he does about this. Like that's It's such a big problem, such a big problem for him. You know, if the pawn here was protected well, it's it would be a pawn in my side. I'm also stopping ideas of knight a4, knight b6, or knight c5 because the knight is pinned. If my opponent castles, he doesn't castle, so let's not worry. I think bishop takes is probably the best, just keeping the pressure. I also, it allows my knight to continue covering the e5 square so he can't hop in. My opponent castles, knight f6 looks good. Maybe I can do something like takes, takes, and knight e4 at some point. But I don't know if I want to trade off my dark squared bishop, considering basically all my pawns are on light squares. Knight e7 into f5 would be typical, going after d4. My bishop's not really under any threat. Do I want to go knight f6, or do I, do I want to go knight e7? For me, that's the question. Do I want to go to f5 or do I want to go to e4? f5 is very, very typical of the Cairo and the French. It's a very, you know, typical square to go to, especially since the bishop isn't on d3 targeting that square. Bishop e2 was a weird move, to be fair. Knight f6. Mm, I don't know. I think I prefer knight e7. Also, I'm just supporting everything, and everything is supporting that knight. I can drop this bishop back to b6 if I want, and then if knight a4 drop back to a7 to control this knight's movement. I could even do some weird maneuver where I come back to b8 to set up a battery in the future. I think the only concern about my position is my um, bishop here. Okay, he's going to offer me a trade of bishops. I don't think I can really decline it. I could let him take me, but that feels a little bit loose. So I think I should probably take him. I could drop back and do this. Actually, I think I like that. Normally, you don't want to give your opponent the bishop pair, but I feel like his, his knight is his most um, valuable piece. If we go something like takes takes, he's going to put this knight on c5, which is kind of annoying. Whereas if I go bishop b6, if he trades, then his knight is obviously, you know, taken off the board. And if bishop b6, uh, I don't know, he plays something like c3, shoring up his center, 
I can always drop back to a7, play something like b5, and if the knight comes in, I can just take it. I think I like this. Now, I know I have loads of pawns on light squares, and trading off my dark square bishop, therefore, should be a bad idea. I'm well aware. And, it, and also, crucially, he would retain his dark square bishop. Which would be quite a powerful piece, because it can pierce through all of my unprotected squares. I totally understand that. But, I think concrete, like, intuitively that feels wrong, right? To give up my dark squared bishop when he has a dark squared bishop and all my pawns are on light squares. Especially since I still have a really bad light squared bishop. But, I'm up a pawn. My position is very solid. He's just wasted a move playing b3. I don't think I was really going to take him anyway. Can I take? I think I can. I think I can. Because if he tries bishop 2 e3 with a pin, I can take his bishop or his knight, which comes with check, so he can't take my queen. I think that's just two pawns up. It does open this diagonal for him, I suppose. But... Let's say knight d4, bishop to c3. Do I want to take his bishop or his knight? I don't know. Let's say... Let's say the bishop. Queen takes. And then, I don't know, something like castles. Queen e5, threatening g7. Mm, that's not that comfortable. So maybe it's better after knight takes bishop c3 to take the knight, and after bishop takes, then I can castle. That looks okay. I guess his bishop is actually quite a bad piece because all my pawns are on light squares. So it kind of doesn't have many targets because they're so well protected. So his dark squared bishop would just be the problem. And if I can neutralize that or eliminate that, then I'm good. I can also consider the move knight to f5 going after d4, but then he plays a move like c3 or bishop e3, and then he's guarded. So I think knight, d5, knight d4 is the critical move. Bishop e3 does not concern me because this pin is irrelevant because I take the knight with check. But knight e4, bishop c3, I'm a bit more worried about. Um, because, like I said, this bishop is very strong. It's difficult for me to do a lot about it. Although, I could play knight f5. Guarding g7. g4, though. That looks like a strong move. Kicking my knight away. And the knight doesn't have many squares. Knight d6, bishop g7, rook g8, bishop e5, takes king h1, knight e4. I suppose that's playable. Sorry, I know I'm drawing a bunch of arrows here. It is playable, I suppose, but it also feels completely unnecessary. I think I should take the plunge, though. Here, this is fine because I just take with check and then move. Let's do it. The The important thing is that my knight always moves with check. And if he exchanges with me, this bishop can't move anywhere with a check because my king is on a light square. And therefore, he can't win my queen. And all he, all he would be able to do is trade queens, which, since I'm up two pawns, obviously favors me. And he takes. Wow. That's unexpected. That's really unexpected. Um, I don't actually see the point of that because my queen is just very strong now. And if he goes for something like rook a4 to try and kick me out, I'd probably come back to like f6. Yeah, he goes for that. Okay. Maybe he wants to lift the rook to a square like f4. I could consider... Hmm, then he has this. Don't love that. A funny move would be queen b2, because it's actually quite difficult to kick my queen out. Uh, queen e4, 
five would be interesting. But bishop f4 is protected by the rook. Don't love it. His bishop pair could activate quickly. This is my concern. And he can also swing his rook over potentially and get his queen involved. So I do have to be accurate here. I feel like I should be winning, but I need to find it. I need to find the most accurate continuation. Queen f6 feels right. Queen f6, queen, uh, rook f4. Um, my queen's running out of squares. I go knight f5. G4, queen g6. Mm. Don't love it. Queen f6, rook e4, queen g6. Ingo rook g4 or bishop d3. It's actually difficult. Okay, what if I come here? Queen e5, bishop f4. Ah, maybe then I go queen f6 because he doesn't have rook f4. Ooh. He does have f4, though. He does have f4. So what if I switch the move order up? Queen f6, rook f4, queen e5, like this. Because he can't attack my queen with bishop f4 then. Same idea, but in reverse. Uh, rook e1 is scary. Rook e1 is scary. But maybe I go queen d6. His threat is bishop to b5 check, winning my queen. Maybe I go queen d6. Then he can go bishop to c3. It looks really, really scary. So I'm in like... No, I've got a castle. And then uh, queen d5... Knight f5 isn't playable because he takes with the rook. This is tough. His bishops, if they come alive, I'm going to lose. Also, if I go queen e5, he could just go rook to e1. Maybe queen b2 is the best. Just to monitor the c3 square so his bishop can't go there. And just keep an eye on this diagonal as a whole. Queen b2, how does he kick my queen out? If he goes bishop c1... Then maybe I come to c3. And if he goes back to d2, then I can go to c7. If he tries to block me out of a move like c3, that feels wrong. Because now his bishop can't access that square. And his bishop is blocking his queen. It's very tough for him to trap my queen as well. Maybe it's possible, but it looks very difficult. Just because of the coordination of his pieces. I'm going to do it. Queen b2. I hope I'm not missing something obvious. If something like bishop g5, I think I just go knight g6. And I'm probably okay. If I could get moves like e5, bishop e6 in, then I would be a lot happier. But I don't, I, I don't have the time currently to do that. So it makes my life... A lot more difficult. Fair play to my opponent. This might have been his best idea. I didn't think much of um of knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, and rook a4. I didn't think it was that good, but actually looking at the position, he has a lot of um activity. And he does have the bishop pair, and I have a very lame bishop on c8. Maybe I can try like b5, bishop b7, or bishop d7, bishop b5, bishop c6. Something like that. Like I said, if I could play like e5, bishop e6, my bishop would be playing a much bigger role in the game. But then e5 would be quite loose and potentially targetable by a rook on e1 or a bishop on c3, which is why I'm trying to stop the bishop from going to c3. I think that's the big um, thing that I need to stop, is bishop c3. 
because g7 is very weak. And if his bishop and queen can form some kind of battery on this diagonal, I'd probably just lose. Or have to play f6 and weaken my position drastically. Which, obviously, I don't want to do either of those. <laughs> because in one scenario I get checkmated, and in the other scenario I probably still get checkmated. So let's not get checkmated. That's your chess motto for the day. By the way, if you are not subscribed and you've made it this far in the video, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button so you get notified when new videos drop. And so more content like this, even if it isn't from me personally, but more educational, I mean like ed educational entertainment chess content can get recommended to you on your YouTube home. That is how the algorithm works after all. So yeah, and if you are already subscribed, hey, you know I love you lot. You know you are the best. So my opponent's taking a bit of a think here, which is probably good. The thing is, when I saw this position after queen b2, it looks like white has some good chances. The issue is, it isn't obvious how he goes about creating chances, which is why I went for this variation. I don't know what he's going to play, which is why I'm just making general observations about the position, because I'm not sure what he's going to do. There's no point calculating con concrete lines from moves that he has like a 10% chance of playing. Let's say bishop d3. That looks like an okay move. But I would give like a 15-20% chance he plays that move. So there's no point me con there, no point me calculating a bunch of lines after bishop d3 because he probably doesn't play it and that's a waste of my brain power. Better instead is to make general observations. So you know, maybe he goes c3 but it weakens his position a bit. Okay, he chooses bishop b4. That wasn't on my mind whatsoever. <laughs> I, <laughs> I did not consider that move in the slightest. Knight c6 looks like the best move to me. Maybe his point is just to stop me from castling. Bishop d7 also looks good, chasing the rook. b5 doesn't work because he just takes, and then I lose my rook if I take back. So bishop d7 looks like a good move. My issue with knight c6 is that he just plays a move like bishop d6. And um, that bishop's going nowhere. On the bright side, my queen now can come back to f6 because he has no ideas of rook f4 because he doesn't control that square. Okay. Yeah, knight c6 I don't think is good. So it just blocks this diagonal for, for my bishop. So bishop d7 kicks the rook. If he takes, then I'll just take here. And I should be pretty good because I can force more trades of bishop d5 so bishop d7 looks like the move to me can he trap my queen? no absolutely not let's do it, bishop d7 I'm expecting just rook a1 to be honest rook a1 looks like the logical move and then maybe I play knight c6 now, and if bishop d6, the difference is I can play queen d4 maybe? Because the rook isn't controlling that square, and my knight is. If bishop d3... Oh, that's not great. I could... No, I actually can't play that because my rook is pinned. And I can't castle because my knight hangs. Bishop b4, good move from my opponent. Definitely, good move. I want knight f5, it just looks more vulnerable. But it is over on the king's side. I could play queen f6 to guard the knight and prepare castling. That looks pretty good. I could also go rook c8 to prepare bishop b5 because there wouldn't be a pin. And target c2, also control c3. If bishop d3 is played to guard c2, how do I respond? Knight c6. Bishop d6. Or bishop a3. And then maybe I can play a move like knight d4. I don't know if I should be trying to attack him right now though. Rook c8 looks harmless though. Because he can't allow me to do, do 
there? Mm. I don't know, maybe he can. Maybe I should have just gone queen f6. I mean, he can take and force my king to take. But I'm not really that concerned, to be honest. Because his dark, squ his dark squared bishop is way too good of a piece to be trading off like that for a terrible knight. I mean, it's not a terrible knight, but it's just an awkward knight. Yeah. That looks far more natural. Good find. I could go queen d4 to target the bishop. But I think queen f6 is the move I want to play, just to guard the knight. If I can castle and play a move like rook e8, then I should be good. Because uh, obviously the bishop would be pinning to my rook. And the problem is I can't just move my knight and castle because his bishop will stay on this diagonal and stop me. I can't castle because he'll take my knight, which is why I played queen f6 to guard my knight. Also just get my queen out of any potential danger. H7 is absolutely fine, not a problem. If queen h5 or something weird like that. I can, I don't know, there's a bunch of things I can do. Queen d2, that doesn't do a whole lot. If knight c6, yeah, he just, well, bishop d6, we have e5. But knight c6, bishop a3. He also can't go bishop c3 because my rook helps control that square, which I like. So I think castling is the best move. Let's just castle. Once I get rookie eight in, I'm good. I'm just up two pawns. And my opponent's pressure is gone. That's all I need to achieve. Maybe there was a better way for him to put on more pressure. Uh, I am low on time though. But I do have a uh, 10 second bonus time after every move. Which is very useful, obviously. But I also felt like we, were, we did have a few critical positions where we needed to play accurately. C4 I think is a good move. C4 I think is good. He's also preparing bishop c3. I think d4 is probably the best to stop anything. Yeah, rook d8 or rook e3. Sorry, rook d8 or rook e8 probably to follow. Now this diagonal is open for my bishop too. Knight c6 will be playable when I move the rook to guard my center, attack the bishop. My pawn on a6 is very strong. I like this position now. I like it a lot. We have a pass d pawn. These pawns aren't really going anywhere. He does have a bit of pressure. Maybe he can try taking. But e even if we lose this pawn, even if we lose this pawn, it doesn't matter. Because we'll be up a pawn still. And it'll be light squared bishop versus light squared bishop, which honestly we should win. Okay, yeah. Uh, rook d8 looks good. Rook e8, I know, defended the knight. But there's nothing... I don't really want to push this pawn yet. But now the pawn is very solid on e6. So you could argue the rook would have been good on e8 to support this pawn going up the board. Which may be the best idea. It might be. But I just want to secure my d4 pawn to, to just maintain my advantage. Because even if this isn't the best line, I think it's simple. What I have to avoid doing is playing a move like knight c6 and trading bishops like this and getting into a uh, opposite color bishop endgame, which could be a draw. Bishop c6 looks good to me. We're just offering trades. And my rook defends d4, so there's no problems. Let's do it. We have something like takes, 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 takes. Then we're just up two pawns in a major piece endgame. And white's queenside pawns are actually kind of vulnerable. But more importantly, we can just push our center once we have sufficient support behind it. And the more we trade, the better. Like I say, we do have to trade in a good way, though. We can't allow an opposite colored bishop endgame with a move like knight f5. We don't want to do that. E5 looks good. Preparing E4. His bishop's annoying, but, you know. I would like to put the knight here, but he's just going to take me. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do is go E5, E4 to give my knight breathing room. But he's not going to allow it. Let's be realistic. Let's be realistic. Uh, E5 should be okay, though. Even if we trade the bishops, we should be alright. Sorry, my knight for his bishop. Even if that happens, we should be okay. Now I can shift my focus to the e-file as well. Because d4 is well defended. My bishop is also very, very strong. Which is good news. 
We are targeting G2. Ooh, F3. That is weakening. Stops this, but it's quite weakening. Now, my knight is a bit of a problem. Feels like a problem. Hmm. I actually don't know what I want to play. I really don't know what I want to play. I I'm... I feel like I'm a bit stuck here. Because knight f5 is the move I want to do, but I don't know if this trade is good for me. Maybe because there's so many pieces still on the board, and I have strong pawns going through. Maybe I can do it? But I don't know. King g7 will always be a good move. I might put my knight on g8 to try and get to f6? I don't know. And then maybe go to f4, which would be a really, really nice square. But it's just difficult to access. I couldn't go through g6 because he would take me. And I can't go through d5, obviously, because he'll take me with the pawn. <laughs> if he plays a move like this, then of course we go knight to e5 and we probably win. Well, we could go to either of these squares. Okay, that's why I didn't go rook c7, because that was a move I was considering. Let's move the rook. Keep the rooks on light squares so that this bishop can't target them. Because this bishop isn't great, it's not really going to get anywhere. G6 also just like blunts it even further. Yeah, let's continue with our plan. It's a very slow plan. Well, something like this. It's a very slow plan, I know. But it's, there's not really any urgency. After knight g8, I could offer a trade of queens. But it does ruin our pawn structure a bit. And then maybe this will become vulnerable. Let's drop back. Maybe we're going to transfer this rook to e8. The knight... The thing is, the knight was just a target to the bishop. If we get the, the knight off of e7, my queen is free to move. My rook is free to move. We don't have to worry about defending it. Also covers some important squares. The knight can come back into the game at some point. My bishop is still amazing. His pawns don't really have much mobility. I'm probably going to play rook e8. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Do I have to take him? Can I push? I don't think so. If here, here, we have a problem. I think I have to take. I don't love that. I really don't love that. But I think we have to do it. If rook f4, queen g5 blunders my queen. Maybe queen d8 is the only move. Oh, this is rough. This is really rough. But at least f7 is guarded. Queen g5 is the move I wanted to play, but it just blunders the queen. My opponent's creating counterplay, so he's doing a good job. Really good job. Let's go knight h6 to defend f7. I need to find some kind of counterplay. The problem is, I can't play a move like rook e7, because bishop controls that square. This rook is kind of locked out of the game. I can't put a piece on f8 either. I can't put a piece on e8. I do have a5? Or maybe queen b6? Wow, nice move. I think. I just go b6. I can't take. I can't take. We have to retreat. We also need to play quickly, of course. But we can take. Why did I allow this? I I just forgot this rook was helping. What an idiotic move. What an idiotic move. I'm worried about this knight. He doesn't have queen h4, but he does have rook h4. This is going horribly, horribly wrong. My knight is really stranded now because it can't get back. 
can't get back. I do have pressure on the bishop, but if this bishop just sits here, I can't do anything. Hmm. And I also have very little time, as I keep mentioning. Okay. I feel like this gives us a little breathing room, although it does restore material equality. So Queen F8. Maybe I might... Hmm. The bishop's under attack. We've lost our two-pawn advantage. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. We can go rook e8 though. To challenge his rook on the e-file. My opponent has played this like ridiculously well to get back into the game. I'll be interested to see where I went wrong. Because I felt like I played this reasonably well. Okay, let's offer a trade. I don't like the rook on the e-file. It's so, so annoying. My knight, I know, is a problem. I know it's an issue. But I don't see what to do about it. Maybe I could have tried f5 and knight f7. Maybe that was an idea. Or f5, knight g4. Doesn't look half bad. What am I going to do if queen, queen h4? That's the question. What am I going to do? He doesn't do it. Okay, that's a good move, though. Um, no, it doesn't work. Bishop e4. Queen e4. Three knight g four. That looks complicated. Complications are probably what we need. If he trades with us, we get a load of activity. And knight g four to follow. Should I have already gone knight g four? Maybe. Maybe. That's a good move. But knight f five? Okay, the rook is looking a bit stuck-ish. Bishop's under attack. Bishop d3 maybe to follow. If something like bishop b2, bishop d3, and we're looking at my opponent's back rank. <sighs> wow, this is really, really tense. Really, really tense. Full credit to my opponent for giving me so much to think about. Also, if his bishop retreats, he will have ideas of back-ranking me with this bishop covering the diagonal. Good move. Yeah, I think bishop d3 is our best opportunity to try and open things up on the d-file for us because the bishop's currently covering d1. The bishop goes to a square like f3. He does it. Wow. Okay. Um, what do we do? I don't know what to do. I'm just going to offer a queen trade. Because otherwise we infiltrate. I, hmm. This is bad. We're losing this pawn. And now we're down a pawn. Ah, uh, that's not good. This is really not good. Okay. Don't see what else we can do. No tactics, because d1 is covered by the bishop, unfortunately. Rook here. We're getting back ranked as well. Maybe we have to go h5. Oh, that doesn't even work. No, we just have to go rook d8. Because this would be mate. Because this bishop is so powerful. So powerful. I don't know where I've gone wrong here. Since when did 1300s play this good, by the way? Like, what? Since when? Crazy. Crazy. Um. Okay, let's try some cheese, potentially. 
he tries to move his bishop. And obviously we just need to stay on the back rank at this point. <sighs> God. He can't move the C pawn, which is a bonus. But I can't really kick the bishop out. Can't do anything about it. Maybe I need to go h5, h7, but then f7 becomes incredibly weak. Bishop d5. Oh, he hangs the rook. He hangs the rook. Thank God. Thank God. I'm re I I don't really understand. I'm not accusing my opponent of anything. Don't don't get it twisted. I'm not. Um but he's played so well. And like I'm normally rated about 2000. And this guy has somehow outplayed me down two pawns. Like what? How? I mean, don't get me wrong, obviously I've gone wrong somewhere. Of course I have, but I don't know where. Maybe I just went too low on time because I spent too long in the opening and maybe I would have found the correct moves had I not done that. Maybe it was way easier than I actually think it is in some of these positions. But yeah, crazy, crazy. And I suppose the game's not completely over because he does have two passed pawns. But now without the checkmating threat of his rook coming to A8, our rook can now get involved in the game far easier. And we should just be able to clean up these pawns and win. Unless he plans on timing me out by just not moving and waiting until his clock runs out of time, which wouldn't be very cool. Wouldn't be very cool of him, but it wouldn't be unheard of. I think that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, you can see he's just disconnected. Uh, I'm going to pause the video for you guys because, um, because you know, you don't want to have to wait. But I'll see you when we get into the analysis or if he returns, I suppose. Okay, so game review uh, has a bone to pick with me. <laughs> it's given me 73.6% accuracy and my opponent 74.7% be really interesting to see where i went wrong here um yeah very interesting i feel like i handled the opening quite well well we'll see we have e4 c6 knight f3 d5 my opponent plays the exchange and he goes bishop b5 which i felt was a little bit off i felt like this was not quite right let me just turn the uh, evaluation bar on there knight f6 is a good move e6 is also a good move bishop to g4 is not i didn't feel like this was a good move c3 is fine c4 is fine my, my opponent can play a lot of things it's just not on the right lines so if i were to have gone knight f6 i was just a bit concerned about a move like knight e5 apparently bishop d7 and i suppose i'm fine if he takes here then like there's nothing to worry about I guess maybe I just got a bit spooked because queen b6 is apparently an, an inaccuracy because of c4. The point is you attack the center and you defend your bishop, which makes sense. My opponent goes knight c3 though, which I felt, I felt like he would play, which is kind of the reason I went for this line because I thought he was just going to play knight c3 because it's the most natural looking move, right? c4, once you see it, you're like, okay, that makes sense. But is a 1300 really going to see c4? Anyway, I go e6, a4, and a6 is unnecessary, but it's fine. My opponent goes a5, I drop the queen back, and he retreats, which is wrong. It's just a very strange way to handle the position. Bishop b4 is played. Bishop d6 was apparently better, but okay. Bishop d2, and we take. And a lot of the time, in these kinds of um, structures, taking on a5 is a bad idea. Which is why I was being so careful about it and spent so much time on it. But here, I was just calculating and I was like, what's the problem? I can just take this. Maybe it was taking on d4 later on was th that was the issue. Knight g7, this is good. Bish knight 2 a4. Okay, here, bishop b6 is an inaccuracy. So I should have taken... And after queen takes, I guess I just castle. And if the knight comes into c5, I mean, we don't have, actually have any issues. Like, we're fine. We can just play normal chess. Knight f5, uh, h6, d4, 
is b6 playable? No, because then we hang a6. What am I on about? But we're fine. The, my concern was my position looked a bit cramped. But we're just up a pawn and we're, we're chilling. Let's say h6 is played. Uh, I don't know. Rook f1. f6 is the best move, which is... Nah, I'm just not going to play that, let's be real. Something like knight f5 looks more natural. And we just play chess. We just play chess. I went bishop b6 though. And my opponent traded, went b3, and I took on d4. And this was the best line. Bishop e3 doesn't work. Because I can take the bishop or the knight. I think I think Eva's fine. Taking on d2 is apparently better. And I can just play like, I don't know, queen d6, queen c7. For me, c7 would be more natural. And I don't really have any problems. My, my, my opponent took though. And I thought this was bad. But this is the best line. And rook a4 is a good move. Bishop b4 check is also a good move because uh, the pawn is pinned to the rook. So I'd probably have to play king f8, knight c6, or bishop b7. Bishop b7 looks okay. This doesn't look bad. I can go for moves like rook c8. I'm up two pawns. My king's a bit exposed. Maybe c4 is a problem, though. And yeah, rook a4 is a good move as well, though. Um, And I was so torn about what to do. This felt wrong, and this is wrong. Now, I didn't see bishop b5 check, but I did see rook f4. And rook f4 is one of the better moves. And I was just really scared about this position. I didn't want to do it. The computer says I can drop back to c7, and I'm fine. But this is looking really dangerous to me. Like, I don't know how I'm going to defend this properly. So I didn't go for it. I went queen b2. Oh, and by the way... If I'd have gone to e5, I was worried about bishop to f4. Here, apparently, I can go f queen f6. I rejected this because... Why did I reject this? I think just, like, bishop d3 or bishop e3 or bishop d6. It still just looks very dangerous. Queen b2 is what I played, though. Because my idea was to keep an eye on c3 because I didn't want to let his bishop onto the long diagonal. I put it with bishop b4. That's a mistake. Bishop e3 is the best because you're going to put the bishop on d4. Okay. So then I would have to bring my queen back. And after bishop d4, then I have e5. So my opponent again would have to find bishop b5 check. Bishop d3 is also alright, but the computer thinks I'm better. I went bishop b4. This is a mistake. I go bishop d7, which is the best move. If he takes my knight, then I just take his rook. I can do both, actually. But I was just going to take his rook. Because I was expecting something like bishop c5. I can go bishop e 5 and the game should be, should be relatively okay. If he goes for something like this. Win a3, bishop g7, rook g8, bishop b d4 and i feel like i'm good here because he doesn't have all that much activity to be honest he went rook a1 he went rook c8 that's a mistake because of the move c3 ah trying to trap my queen maybe or c4 so better was queen f6 just getting out of there which i did consider queen e5 is also okay but rook c8 it's fine. After c3, the computer wants me to sack the rook. And after bishop c3, queen c3, I'm exchanged down, but three pawns up. So I mean, like, rook c1, queen f6. I'm okay here. I'm okay here because I just have a lot of pawns, and they're really, really strong. And the deep pawn is obviously passed. Maybe b3 will become very weak over time. But yeah, my opponent went bishop d3, I retreated to f6, queen d2. I'm wondering where I went wrong, because I still have the advantage. There's a fair few more moves to go, though, and I just got lower and lower on time. I castled, c4, good move. d4 is an inaccuracy, but it's not that bad. Better was bishop c6. Or rook f8, e or rook f d8. Okay, makes sense. I choose d4, rook a c1, rook f d8. We're doing well, bishop c6. My opponent can't go trading here. 
because I mean I can take with the knight or the rook, probably with the knight though, because the knight's unassailable on c6 and controls a lot of the dark squares. Something like bishop to a3, and I'm chilling. Like, I'm absolutely chilling. So he didn't do that. He kept the bishop on the board. And here I was really torn because I wanted to play knight f5 or knight g6. But I was like, he can just take. And after I take back, let's say with the h pawn, how do I win this with opposite colored bishops? The computer says it's winning. I guess I'm up two pawns and we have loads of other pieces left on the board. It's difficult for white to trade them off. And I'm going to start advancing my pawns. But I don't know. I felt like there would be drawing opportunities. So instead I go e5, which is actually the best move f3 and here i was really really torn because i did not know what to do i simply didn't know what to do knight g6 again is the best move rook e8 is playable knight f5 is good but i didn't want to move my knight to a square it could be taken so i went g g6 which it's a step in the wrong direction but i'm still okay bishop a5 rook d7 rook e8 is apparently a bit better bishop b4 King g7, rook c e1. Again, I need to be bringing my knight into the game. And here, I really considered it. But I dropped back to g8. And this is where the game switches. Because of f4. Great move. Great move. f4. And e4 is the best. But I was like, I'm just losing the pawn. Apparently, I go knight h6. And I just keep everything shut. Let's say my opponent just plays a kind of nothing move. Again, the idea is knight f5, or maybe takes takes knight f5. No. Which is interesting. Or just put the rook on d8, and if you attack me, I have b6. And then what, I just push, play like knight f5, and I'm good. Yeah, see, I got really low on time here, because I was kind of panicking in all honesty and i took and this was step in the wrong direction again rook f4 and initially i thought i had this move but i don't because of rook no not rook f6 rook f7 and there's a check and my queen is under attack so i went i found the only move queen d8 because every other square i lose a queen queen f2 great move my h6 is an accuracy. f5 is better? Or queen b6? Uh, maybe queen b6 makes sense. f5 or f6 are better though. f5, not gonna lie, I probably should have found. I think I was a bit concerned about moves like g4. But apparently that's fine after knight to h6. And if you take... I have queen g5 and you can't go here. So king f1... Knight f5, bishop f5, g5, rook f5. And I'm supposed to just hang on to this position after queen g4. I don't know, this looks so, so dangerous. So dangerous. My king is completely exposed. I guess so is his, but this is also a lot of calculation. I don't have time to calculate. I go knight h6. Bishop c5 allows... Ah... I offer a trade, and if you take me, then I take, and I'm good. And I'm just going to shove this d-pawn down the board. So if you go bishop d3 to stop me, then rook c6, basically anything, and I'm just better, because f7 is defended. I chose b6, and I just completely didn't realize that this pawn was under attack from three pieces. For some reason, in my head, this rook was only doing these two things and not attacking d4. Funny, it's funny how you like your brain works when you're playing chess, and sometimes you just have blind spots. Bishop e4 is the only good move because it blocks this rook's connection. Bishop e4 is a hard move to find. It really is. That is a, that is a tough move. If you gave me like five minutes in this position, maybe I find it, but not with 17 seconds. So I went b6. My opponent took. I did consider sacrificing the exchange, but I thought there's no point. Let's go king g8. Bishop b6. I just hung another pawn. <laughs> queen f. 
8 better was queen g5, which honestly I should have seen. Bishop comes back to d4, and this is just a killer bishop. I have no bishop to target it with as well. Rook e8, I try to trade off. Rook f6 is a blunder, because I have knight g4 straight away. I don't know why I didn't see this. Like, I have no idea. Queen f4. I also still have to be careful. I do. But if I take here, then queen takes. And I have to take this to avoid getting mated. And then it's just a draw. So apparently I have to take here first. And after queen d4. Now I have this. No, not that. This to win the bishop. And if you go to f1, I take with check. And if you come back to h1, then I take and you can't take because you get mated. And if you block with the queen, then I take and you're no longer attacking my bishop. Again, this is a long line. And with no time, I just didn't see it. Bishop e4. And this move makes sense. This move does make sense. Because if you take, I'm okay. You know, I have a lot of pressure in the position. And I'm, I'm doing all right. Why? Like, the only move not to lose is rook f4. That is the only move in the position. He probably finds it because he has so much time. But bishop e2 is the best move. So fair play to him. He makes me, like, really, really struggle here. And this is the best? Wow. No, it's not. The computer's changed its mind. Okay. We went... What did we go? Knight f5. This is okay. Bishop c3. So, uh, you can't go bishop b2 because of rook d2. So, you need to block this square. I went bishop d3 because my idea was if you take and rook takes, I'm winning. So, this bishop d3 was a good move from me. I'm happy I found that with such low time because I'm just threatening a lot of back rank stuff and the bishop's under attack. If you play a move like bishop to e1, rook fd1, you can't defend the bishop. If you go king f1, I have knight e3 check, king g1, knight g4, and just everything is under attack and you've lost. The bishop f3, queen e3 is a blunder. Okay, bishop e4 is the move. If you trade with me, you're losing. No, I have rook d1 check first. And after bishop e1, we get the same position. So white has to be careful. He has to drop back probably to e2. I just go bishop d3 again, I assume. And white has to be, like, insanely accurate here. Because he has to take on a6. Point is, I can't take the bishop because I will get checkmated. And that's a brilliant move as well. Again, difficult to find. I went queen e3 because I was simply out of time. You can see I had 11 seconds. That means I had 1.6 seconds because I get 10 second increment after every move. I did not know what to do. I just thought, oh my god, I need to do something. And I trade. King f2. I was trying to make some kind of tactic work on d1, but I can't I can't deflect the bishop anyway. So I retreat, he takes on a6, and I'm just losing. I really am. F6 is the best move, just giving the pawn up because of all the back rank issues. I went rook d8, bishop f6, rook e8. My idea was, if this bishop moves, then maybe I have something by checking him. If he goes back, then I do. I have discoveries with rook a2 check. But um, apparently you can just come up here, and my knight has no useful checks, because his bishop controls my knight. The best I can do is check. I can just keep checking him. If he moves up to g4, that's pretty scary. He's okay. But it's scary. My opponent just gave me his rook, though. <laughs> he just gave me his rook. And that was such a relief. Kind of annoying, in a sense. Because I wanted to try and see if I could hold this position. Because, like I say, my idea was to just try and give him some checks and whatnot. But my knight has no movement. My knight literally can't do anything. My opponent just has to push. Now, he can't push this pawn because I take. And he can't push this pawn because I take. But he can just move his rook and then push the c-pawn. I don't know what I would have done. Because rook c doesn't even do anything. c5 I can't take because I get mated. So I literally have no moves. 
my plan was to go h5 to give my king a bit of an escape. Again, it still doesn't even work because after c5, let's just say I do this, I still get mated because of this classic formation. So uh, I really don't know what the best thing for me to do is. Maybe knight g7 to block the bishop. c6, rook c8. I'm still losing completely, obviously. But my opponent, you know, would have to find some accurate moves most likely. But he didn't. He gave me a rook. And at the end of the day, this is 1300 chess. People this level, they find some amazing moves. They really do. They find some great moves. Like earlier in the game, when my opponent played, I think, uh, F5. I think, no, F4. This move was fantastic. Fantastic. And the only way for me to play is E4, which is very difficult to find with 30 seconds on the clock. And then they play moves like pawn... No, not this one. <laughs> that was my blunder. Then they play moves like pawn c5 and blunder over it. So, chess is chess. People make great moves. People make mistakes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one.